spaceships. Should be dirty, weathered and scratched, right? I mean, just a thought. There's bound to be space dust out there, sprays of meteors, not to mention the staining you get when landing on Carbo-6, a planet almost entirely made of coal, thus the galaxy's major exporter of uh, planetary warming. And remember that time you flew real fast through that sandstorm in a rush for a cold drink in Mos Eisley? That left some marks. These relevant thoughts were going through my head when planning to paint up my lander, a little spaceship that I'm going to use as terrain for the tabletop skirmish game Stargrave by Osprey Games. This ship is filament printed on my Anycubic Viper. One of the major points when doing the video on that subject was that admittedly purpose-specific, for this spaceship the texture from the printing process itself was a big win, giving life and texture to what would otherwise have been kind of dull, flat surfaces. Also the fact that in my sci-fi future, most probably spaceships would be 3D printed. Admittedly huge printers working in some space titanium material kind of a thing, but nonetheless, the lines just fit real well. And so I wanted to paint to enhance, to bring out all those printed lines, not hide them, make them stand out as much as possible. Oh, and I wanted to paint this ship metallic, because, well, me and metallic paints have an ongoing grudge. I have this unreasonable urge to show them paints whose boss also spaceships look cool in metallic. So to turn all this into an exciting experiment, I decided to paint this lovely lander with wax metallic paint. True metal paint from AK Interactive. From what I've fathomed without extensive research, um, I like to do research on some things, but not really on techniques and types of paint and that. Uh, that would just spoil the fun of making all the mistakes. Anyway, wax-based metallic paint is supposedly polishable. So one paints on the paint and then polishes up the surface where one wants to a shine. I thought this could be cool, a way to enhance the details on the spaceship with polished raised bits and duller crevices. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First off was, of course, the priming. I primed the ship black with my airbrush. Now this was kind of tricky and time consuming. I think on larger pieces, this is my first biggish paint job really, that some rattle can primer work would not be out of place. I had done some small initial tests with the metallic wax paint and it's real thick, kind of detail clogging thick. It can be diluted with white spirit, but then does not cover fully as well. A vague plan was growing in my head and I decided to give the ship a layer of blue before moving on to the metallic, in a way hoping that this might shine through the coming layers of metallic paint, but also a way to cover my behind in case of future mishaps. I applied the blue in layers, sort of like a zenithal prime, starting with the dark blue, then dusting the model with brighter and brighter blue paints giving some depth to the whole thing. I've got to say that when I do another spaceship, it might be a blue one because this was real nice, but it was not what I set out to do. See you another time, blue lander. My initial plan with the wax metallic paints was to use the steel and the gunmetal, diluted with white spirit and try a type of wet blend using more of the gunmetal in the shaded places and the steel in the more exposed highlighted areas. I was also hoping that the thinner metallic paint would not totally covered the underlying blue zenithal base coat. While working on this I realized that no, the metallic paint covered real well despite the dilution, so I exaggerated my dilution, brushing on paint and then with the help of white spirit I did some excessive wax paint reduction, trying to rub off some of the metallic in places to reveal the blue, resulting in a somewhat worn look. The whole wet blend thing became a redundancy though, all the white spirit and all the rubbing around was mixing the paints quite excessively. The result was a pretty muted metallic, kind of like just a sloppy brushed on base coat, really. So after the first covering metallic paint layer, that took ages by the way, this thing is massive, I sort of edge highlighted with only steel paint. Overall, I would kind of like to describe working with these paints somewhat as working with oils. They smudge out real nice and the working time is extended. So never was a highlighted edge just that one straight line of a brush stroke. I could easily smudge and blend whatever I was doing, giving an overall sort of natural and well uh, organic look. Organic metal, now that sounds sci-fi. Once the wax paint was dry, the recommended 
48 hours, mind you, we're not in a hurry, right? It was time to test the polishing thing. Oh, and I slapped on some paint on a little Stormcast friend as well, as a test to see how this would work out on a miniature. Well, a miniature person, and not a miniature spaceship. Anyway, now, displaying metallic surfaces, as in what they look like in camera compared to in real life, is tricky. I did, however, try. I took a picture of the ship before polishing it, so that we later on can compare to a similar image shot after polishing. I used a microfiber rag for polishing. It was invitingly and handily just lying right there next to me. The effect was not quite the aha moment I thought it would be, but there was a visible shining effect, especially on the steel. The test Stormcast miniature, though, did not like the microfiber rag. I was tearing off paint. Why this happened on the mini and not on the ship, I don't really know. Maybe the edges were sharper or the paint thinner or the plastic harder. I tried a different type of cloth and was still rubbing off paint. Also not quite getting into the finer details. In the end, I settled for Q-tips. This seemed to do the trick. So I applied some Q-tip action to the ship as well. Just, you know, why not? Comparing the before and after is not a massive wow. To the eye, the effect was a little more apparent, but it's not a day and night thing. Looking closer at some details, it's possible to spot the increased shine on the high-polished steel. As mentioned, photographing reflective surfaces is an eye-tricker. But there we are. Looking at my test Stormcast Mini and the effect is even less visible, especially since a lot of the surfaces on Exhibit B, the after polish, because I rubbed the paint away. There is a hint of brighter reflection on the edge of this shield, though. The series of events that now are about to follow are in some way proof of in-the-moment underperforming brain activity with a, for some reason, reoccurring result. The famous, not a mistake, but a happy little accident. I wanted to paint on some details, like, look out, the engines are hot, don't step here or you'll fry, kind of warning marks. Lovingly masking with some tape and then jumping straight for yellow oil paint. Now, two things. Painting yellow straight on a dark metallic surface is not a great idea. A layer of whitish first is a smart thing. Secondly, why oil paints? I don't know. It just kind of happened. And so there I was with thick, blobby, green, not yellow, stripes of paint on my wings that would probably take a day or more to dry. In pure desperation, I pulled out another oil paint, a turquoise one, and started doing some staining, diluting the oil paint with a lot of white spirit to create a type of wash and just to add some color interest to the metallic. While my mind was running through crisis protocol, my hands were brushing away. At some point, I thought to myself, strange, the turquoise is getting darker and darker. It's more like blue than turquoise. And why is there metallic flakes in my white spirit? Yes, I was rubbing away the wax metallic paint, revealing the blue undercoat. The wax paint is, of course, white spirit soluble. And you know, this was kind of what I had been looking for from the start. I ripped off all the tape, cleaned off the yellow oil paint and started to go to work on the entire ship with white spirit, creating scratching and wear by removing the metallic paint, going for crevices, flat areas, trying to work in a streamlined fashion, as in most of the wear goes in lines from the cockpit to the rear of the ship, all in all creating a lovely worn texture. And then I polished everything again. Mind you, I had waited for the wax metallic paint to settle for another recommended 48 hours. Again, traveling through space might be done at very high speeds, painting this thing was not quite as rapid. To avoid any further eventual unhappy accidents, I decided to gloss varnish everything. I always mask up when airbrushing, and this time it was an exceptional idea. I had, going back to the brain underperformance topic, turned the pressure thing on my airbrush compressor the wrong way around, varnish absolutely blasting out. Funny thing is it took me a little while to notice. I was thinking, wow, I really need to put my glasses on. Everything is all blurry. You might be thinking, didn't you see all the varnish pouring down the side of the spaceship? And that's the thing. It didn't. It sort of bounced off. This high-polished wax metallic did not give the varnish anything to grab onto. 
An issue I'm soon about to display, but first a quick thought on the effect of adding varnish. Making everything glossy made me realize sort of what the wax metallic effect is. It's kind of dull at first, and then when polished, it shines. I know, that makes sense. But hence, gloss varnishing the whole thing kind of took the edge off the entire polishing thing. There we are. Now for the issue. Even though I let the varnish dry for 12 hours, when returning to add some new masking tape for the new attempt on the yellow warning lines, I realized even the least sticky tape was tearing off the varnish. It was just not sticking well to the waxed metallic. Kind of makes sense too, wax not being known for its rugged surface, but this is kind of an impractical result. The only available option was to do some freehand painting. I was smart this time around, started off with an off-white before moving on to the yellow. Trying to keep a steady heart and a steady hand, these yellow and black lines really are an eye-catcher and somehow turns the ship into an actual practical utility vehicle and not just a science fiction fantasy. Decals or transfers are a thing. I mean, by now this feels like I'm doing a scale model type video anyway, so we might as well do transfers, right? Besides. They are a lovely asset on large pieces like this. What works for me is to start with a gloss varnished surface, something I already have. Wherever I'm going to add a transfer, I brush on something called Microsol. This is a product that will soften the transfer once it has been applied, so that it will smoothly adhere and shape itself to the underlying surface. The transfer itself will loosen from the paper it's stuck to when put in water for a minute or so. With the help of a soft brush, I can place the transfer where I want it. Well, it's close to where I want it anyway. I can then nudge things around a bit with my brush to adjust the placement. At least for a little while. The more one tries to move the transfer around, the more difficult it becomes. This is obviously lander number two, by the way. Lander number one was last seen near a gang of uh, space orc pirates and disappeared soon thereafter. Now, after everything is in place, I softly brush on more microsol on top of the transfer, carefully brushing away any pockets of air that might be stuck underneath. Very softly, as to not move things around, but also because the microsol softens the transfer itself. Heavy brushwork can tear the transfer into pieces. Because of this softening, the transfer, while it dries, will shape itself to the surface underneath. As you can see, the now dry transfer has the exact shape or depth as the lines of filament on the engine. Lovely stuff. I tend to varnish on top of the transfer once it's dry, not only to give it some extra protection, but so that I can paint on top of it. The varnish will make the paint behave exactly the same as on the surrounding varnished surface. Speaking of paint, that is exactly what I did once the varnish was dry. Using a very thin down acrylic paint, I emphasized some of the lines that already existed on the engine underneath, tying the clean white transfer surface together with whatever's going on underneath. I think the big thing with transfers, once they have been applied, is to try and shade or stain them in the same manner as the underlying surface, making them look part of the scenery and not just a sticker slapped on top. I blocked in some more colors, just a little blue here and there, for extra sci-fi vibe. I mean, this entire thing is just one large sardine tin right now, but a few colored details here and there really brings forth the metallics and, well, makes it look like at least a little bit of effort went into this thing. And while on that subject, the spaceship was just not looking situated. It's not standing on the ground waiting for the crew to return with loot. The lower half is almost as illuminated as the top. I went over the entire bottom and lower bits with a transparent grey through the airbrush, like a reversed zenithal prime, to get the sense of light falling from the sky, resulting in a model that is brighter up top and darker further down. Finally, it was time for oil washes. Get this thing dirty down. I mean, as is, it's way too clean to fit the bill. I'm going to use only black oil paint mixed with a lot of white spirit. First, I smear out the oil paint on a bit of cardboard to soak up some of the oil. This can reduce drying times a bit, and I mean, I've already done a fair bit of waiting for this project. The oil paint is then heavily diluted in white spirit. Odorless white spirit is a nice thing. At first, I thought maybe I could do a bit of selective wash, mainly get things in the recesses and that, but the nature of the filament print, all the lines going here and there, means I just kind of had to cover the entire thing. 
This is just so terribly satisfying to watch though. Imagine some string quartet soundtrack thing while watching this and I'd be in a very happy place. During the application of all this black wash, I wiped off excess as best as I could with some kitchen paper dipped in some white spirit, cleaning up the raised areas as best as I could. But once the wash was dry-ish, I went in with cotton buds or q-tips dipped in white spirit to do a more detailed cleanup on the edges and raised areas. Still not totally feeling the dirt, I just needed more. The black appears more like a shade to the metal and not like dirt. I tried out a variety of staining possibilities. Settling for a dark brown, a bitume oil paint by Abteilung 502. Painting out some small dots here and there, cleaning the brush off with white spirit and then streaking out the dot. All in the direction of travel, so to speak. Like squished insects on the windshield of a car. This is just immensely satisfying as well. Because most of the surface underneath is varnished, I can just do and redo if necessary. But on a whole, this is just one of those wonderful moments in oil paint land. The simplicity and immediate results are so very rewarding. Next up is dry pigments. This adds a great natural looking staining that would be very difficult to do with wet paint. I mainly focus on black soot on the engines and exhausts. But I also figured this thing would have landed on quite a number of planets, not all featuring a proper shuttle landing pad. So a layer of brown dust on the legs would be proper. Knowing how much pigment to add is tricky, I use white spirit to set the pigment in place after application. And when that is dry, I might add more pigment and repeat the process until the right effect is achieved. This time though, to really exaggerate the dirt on the legs, I sprinkled pigment on the white spirit wet legs, really making sure the layer of dirt was very heavy. This will all have to be varnished later on to make it stick more permanently. Now you're thinking, how many more things can we do to this spaceship before we can take it for a spin? Well, at least a few, as it turns out. I found these little staining pencils by AK Interactive. Now, as you can tell, my local friendly game store, Alpha Spiel, started stocking AK Interactive recently, and thus a lot of their products ended up in this video. I would ask you to consider reading up a bit on the company before choosing to buy their products. AK Interactive has in the past made some absolutely, in my eye, horrendous marketing choices, to the extent that some refrain from using their stuff. Others like their stuff to the extent that these things don't matter. Personally, I wanted to try these quite brand specific products. Curiosity killed the cat. Anyway, pencils. They were kind of fun. A very delicate staining, a very good tool for straight streaks, scratches and such. And kind of fun to not be working with a wet medium. I'd like to compare them to, well, regular pencils and crayons. My son has a ton of them. And then, guess what? I varnished the whole thing again. Using a satin varnish this time, I needed to fasten all the pigments in place. And besides, this whole thing is going to act as a terrain piece on the table. I kind of wanted to last a while. The interior was a fast paint job. Scale colors instant paints over a zenithal prime. Dry brushed with Vallejo Stone Grey. I just love this color for dry brushing. It kind of works universally over blues and greens and browns. Same dry brushed highlights over the entire piece. And then a layer of Scale Colors Dark Mud Oil Wash. Now I'm not sure you've noticed, but this vessel is windowless. That needs a remedy. I used packaging plastic. Cut out relatively wrong shaped pieces of window, recut them a lot of times, and then managed with a lot of fiddling about to get them into the slots in the model. They're not perfect, but they're there. And they're also scratched. I mean, in theory, no one really looks out of these things anyway, right? It's all holographic displays and autopilot. Painting on dirt didn't quite work out with uh, regular acrylic paint. I settled for some dry pigments and some of that oil paint streaking. This might all rub off uh, if handled, but I can't see how this window is ever getting clean. And that's the main thing. And now we must be done, right? Well, there was just one last thing. The fact that everything was now satin varnished was not optimal. 
Prior to varnish number one, the wax metallic had quite a beautiful life of its own that I killed with gloss varnish. And then the oil paints and the stains and the pigments that were all matte added a depth and life to the glossy metallic that I killed with the satin varnish. I decided to go over all the painted bits, the blue, the warning stripes, the transfers, with the matte varnish. Then going over all the polished steel bits with the gloss varnish to give them back their shine. Like highlighting with a gloss varnish. Playing around with different varnishes like this is quite fun. And on something of this size it can make a subtle yet powerful sense of life and depth. Not life and death. Uh, this is a hobby, after all. And there we are. Lander complete. That was a lot of going back and forth, right? But it turned out alright in the end. So what about these wax metallic paints? Well, I don't know. After all these things I've added to this, what would the visible difference have been if I just airbrushed on acrylic metallic paint? Rhetorical question. I did try behind the scenes the blue and the purple wax paints as well, but the only one of these four paints that didn't have very visible metallic flakes, the curse of metallic paints, was the steel. The wax paints were quite the joy to paint out with the brush, blending quite seamlessly and with plenty of work time. The polishing was fun, but similar effects on this model could in the end be achieved with different varnishes. The most enjoyable bit was being able to remove paint with white spirit to create that stained worn look. Imagine that same technique but with your typical 40k terrain starting out with a rust base coat covering with wax metallic and then removing streaks of said metallic revealing the rust underneath. My biggest concern with the wax paints was that the wax surface really did not for me seem to like to be covered with anything. The smooth polished surface was just nothing other paints or varnishes liked to adhere to. Oh and on the whole I personally would probably not use these on miniatures being quite thick and the polishing not really showing, I fail to see the point. But please, feel free to enlighten me, this was only my first try with this type of paint. In the end, what I can say though is that staining with oil paints is a revelation and that painting spaceships, although time consuming, is an absolute joy. See you in space, hopefully in the Patreon galaxy. Thanks for watching. Bye.